Hey everyone, my name is Chris and I'm a Surgical Service Registrar and today I want to talk to you about how to make effective decisions during a trauma. When a critically unwell patient is wheeled into the emergency bay, an entire team mobilises to save that patient's life. For everyone in that room, adrenaline is spiking, thoughts are racing and multiple simultaneous interventions are being attempted at the same time. But for you as a doctor or a nurse, this is the most dangerous time in entire trauma response because you want to be myopic. Your body will be telling you to only focus on one particular thing at once, to only focus on one aspect of the patient's care, because your stress response will be such that it will make you ignore all of the peripheral activity which is important but happening around you. This type of myopic response is natural. It's built into our physiology. It's a part of our adrenergic response or our fight and flight mechanism that all of us are born with. But under these circumstances, it can be incredibly dangerous to the patient's care because it leads to a lack of situational awareness, a lack of initiative, and a lack of effective time management under time pressured circumstances. This type of effect has been known about for years and in fact it's the reason why the College of Surgeons developed the Care of the Critically Ill Surgical Patient course, which is a course focused on standardising the care of deteriorating patients in a way that is reproducible for those people in those stressful circumstances uh, managing the patient as a clinician. You see the psychological bias that leads us towards this sort of myopic focus is protective when there are threats to ourselves but it can be actively harmful when we're dealing with threats to other people because it doesn't ask us to look at multiple different scenarios and multiple different circumstances at once. It asks us to focus on a singular threat and deal with that primary singular threat, which can be dangerous when there are multiple issues that need to be managed simultaneously. So the question is, well, how do you deal with that? How do you trick your body or your physiology into responding in a different way than what it was designed to do? From a crisp perspective, the course I referred to earlier, the answer is an algorithm, a reproducible set of steps or a reproducible set of considerations that can be applied universally to these situations and standardise patient care in a way that is safe and effective. And it has been really, really good at doing that. The issue with this particular system is that it's focused towards clinical decision making in a high pressured environment, not necessarily decision making in stressful environments more generally. And so something like a CRISP algorithm will give you a really good set of standard measures that you can take to address the clinical deterioration in a patient. It's not going to help you very much in terms of identifying how the team is operating towards responding to those interventions as they're required, i.e. are we utilising our resources effectively? Are the people most qualified to be making the interventions, doing the interventions? Uh, are the people who are available the people that we actually need? And how are we initiating processes to make sure that that's happening simultaneously with the clinical management of the patient? And the CRISP algorithm doesn't address those questions directly. The principle here is that crisis management or threat management doesn't just involve clinical decisions, it involves people and managing people. And how do you make those decisions effectively about how to utilise those resources? In a military context, they've thought about this for many years, and one of the systems that has been most effective in helping people to work through that sort of problem is a principle called the OODA loop. The OODA loop is an acronym. It stands for Observe, Orient, Decide, Act, and it provides a sequence of steps that you can take to reorientate yourself in a crisis or in a high stakes situation, to make sure you're accounting for all of the necessary points that is going to inform a decision, that's going to be an effective decision, but that you're doing it in a timely way. The principle is that in a situation of high stakes, where rapid decision making is required, you need to first orientate yourself to the circumstances around you, i.e. gain situational awareness, before you can make an effective decision. You then need to orientate yourself to what sort of assets and options you have available to respond to that circumstance so that you're utilising the best resources to solve the problem at any given point in time. And then once you've observed what's happening around you to gain situational awareness, you've orientated yourself to the assets at your disposal, you can then be in a position to decide what it is that you actually need to do. And then all that's required is to act. But that loop needs to happen rapidly. And the principle is that if it can happen more rapidly than a problem is evolving, then you can solve the problem. When this system was first developed, it was developed in an Air Force context. It was developed to try and help fighter pilots work through dogfight scenarios. The principle is, how do you make correct decisions or largely correct decisions quickly enough that you can overcome your enemy? And the principle is that if you can go through the cycle of the OODA loop more rapidly than your opponent can, then eventually you can gain incremental advantage until you overcome them. In a similar way, in a medical context, we think about a deteriorating patient as the rapid progression of a pathological process. And so if your decision making, i.e. your utilisation of your team, your initiation of interventions uh, and your medical management is faster than the deterioration that is occurring, then in theory you can get on top of that situation and you can solve the problem. 
So the question then is, how does this apply to a medical situation? Well, if you think about the OODA loop in the context of responding to an emergency deteriorating patient, the value becomes clear. First process would be to observe the resources that are available. Who are the personnel? What is the equipment that we have? And how do we correct any imbalance between the required skills that we need and equipment that we need and what the patient is presenting as? Then we need to orientate ourselves to who is available and what assets do we have available to respond to the situation and how can we best apply them? Then we decide on which aspect of the team is going to be applied where and how, and then we act on that. And then rapidly we go back into an observing phase where we're re-acclimatizing ourselves to how the situation has changed since we made the first intervention. And the faster that we can do that and the more rapidly we can do that, the better a chance we have of effectively utilizing all of the resources and equipment at our disposal to help the patient. In many ways, it's about making your decision making as timely and effective as possible. That is making the 80% correct decision on time rather than the 100% decision too late and doing it in a way that is rapid enough that you can then respond to any changes that occur in your circumstances. In essence, a system like this acts as an adjunct to a crisp algorithm. So when you're going through your ABCDs of crisis management, then you can also go through an OODA loop to make sure that you're taking into account not just the clinical decision making that needs to take place and how the patient is presenting, but also the people and the resources you have around you and how you can utilize them most effectively to respond to the clinical need. I hope this introduction to a military way of thinking about crisis management has been helpful. And if it has, then let me know in what circumstances you think it would best apply. Or alternately, if you found other things that you think would be equally good or even better so that we can all learn from exactly what your experience has been. And until next time, enjoy the work.